Welcome to the Real Life Show, Living with a Chronic Illness. We are your hosts, Cassie and Chelsea. I'm Cassie, a single mom living with a chronic illness who is extremely passionate about living a full and happy life. And I'm Chelsea, a mindset coach that has a passion for helping people learn to put themselves first and be the best version of themselves each and every day. We came together to create Spoonies Unite, an uplifting community that offers resources, guidance, and support so you can live your best life while giving you the space to be yourself, be heard, and feel understood. This show is not only for those who live with a chronic illness, but their friends, family, spouses, and just anyone else existing on the earth. There's a little something in here for everyone. Thank you to our patrons for your continued support making this possible. If you love our show and want to get some extra goodies, go to patreon.com slash the real spoonies unite. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode of the real life show living with a chronic illness. Today, we're going to talk about body image, all the nitty gritty stuff to do with how you view your body. And we're going to share a few of our own personal experiences in hopes that you will also be able to relate to some of those and feel understood and realize that we all go through issues with our body. And then we're going to go into some great tips. Um, Chelsea is a body love, body positivity guru, and she is going to share some amazing tools um, and and my tips to help you work through your own body image issues. So let's start off with Chelsea. Will you tell us about um, some of your body image experiences or issues and um, your feelings about that? I consider myself to be pretty fortunate that I don't have a massive amount of body image issues. That being said, there are still plenty of moments when I look in the mirror or see a photo of myself and don't feel the excitement or the love or the happiness that I would really want. And I think that no matter how you feel about your body, there's going to be moments that you feel really good. And there's going to be moments where you don't feel as good. And so for me, it's not always this like, oh, I hate myself, um, which I'm very, very thankful for. I don't know what my parents did, but they definitely instilled the self-confidence in me. Um, and so for me, it's a lot more about getting through those moments where you're not feeling the best. Um, I know that I personally have a little bit more of an athletic build. I am not super, super, super thin. Um, I have hips, I have curves, I have very broad shoulders. And I remember I have a very distinct memory of when, when I was in college, there's a picture of me and the other group fitness instructors that I worked with at the time. And just the angle that I guess I was at or whatever, but my shoulders look twice as wide <laughs> as every other girl that was up there. Um, and that was something that I was just like, oh my God, are my shoulders really that wide? Uh, and I have broad shoulders. Like I, I, I truly do. It's, it's okay. I should have been a swimmer. Um, my parents <laughs> messed up by not putting me in swim longer because I probably would have been good. I got the build for it. Um, and so it definitely takes me some time to look at myself and not just pick apart all those, those little things that you're like, well, I don't like this. Or I don't like that. Um, so I have wide shoulders. I have hips there. My hips are there. They're very prominent, but I don't really have a butt. <laughs> Um, there's just, there ain't a whole lot of junk in the trunk for me. And that's something that during different parts of my life, I felt really self-conscious of. Um, and that also wasn't always the case. Uh, when I was growing up, when I was in like middle school and high school, I actually was pretty thin. Um, like I wore a size zero jeans for a little bit. My, my pelvis is wider than that now. Um, but I'll talk a little more about that in a second. Um, and I remember I played softball. I was a catcher. And so catchers more stereotypically are these built strong ass women, um, that just they're, they're, they're built very, very strong. And so I remember we were ordering uniforms for a team I played for when I was in high school and my coach was like, Hey, what size pants do you need? And I said, small. Because at the time, I anything bigger than a small would have fallen off my hips. My hips had not come in at that point. And I remember him looking at me and being kind of like, you're a catcher and you only need, like, you need small. Like, you don't need something, like, bigger. Like, you're supposed to be squatting and jumping and doing all these things. And it didn't necessarily um, affect me at the time. But obviously, I still remember it. Um, and I think looking back, 
that was something that stood out to me of like someone was telling me that the size of my body wasn't what it was thought it was supposed to be. And again, I've been very fortunate that a lot of the times those comments don't really affect me. I remember them. So they affect me on some level, but they're not necessarily making me feel negative about myself. Um, Though I still remember from high school another time where uh, I ran track and track uniforms are very small. They tend to be very tight. And while I didn't have a high body fat percentage growing up, um, because I don't have very much of a booty, my booty is pretty small. Um, Pilates and bar is making it bigger. So if you need more of a booty like me, do Pilates, do bar. Um, But because of the shape of my body, the kind of just like amount of fat on my hips kind of in that I don't like using this term really, but the love handle region was a little bit more prominent. And so I had an older boy comment on the fact like, oh, you've got love handles and definitely didn't make me feel good at all. But it's been easier for me to kind of brush past some of those comments. I personally tend to not care as much about what other people say about me versus the thoughts that I have of myself. I can tear myself apart, um, but luckily I'm really aware of those thoughts. And so I can kind of stop that pattern, stop that um, downhill circle. But there is one thing that I'm currently very aware of and trying to be much better at is that I can get very insecure around my fiance at times, which is very, very weird. And he points this out to me fairly often because I bring it up fairly often. Like I always talk about, I'm like, well, um, we're planning our wedding. We're going to get married um, next fall um, in about a year and a half. And I'll talk about like, well, what if I'm not as pretty in my wedding dress as like you're picturing in your head that I'm going to be, or just what if I'm not as beautiful as you want me to be that day? And I say it like half joking, but because I'm aware of my thoughts, I also realized that I wouldn't even bring that up if there wasn't some underlying insecurity. And he'll flat out tell me, he's like, why are you so insecure? You know, I think you're beautiful. You know, I find you incredibly attractive. Where's the issue coming from? And um, so I think basically what this long-winded rainbow is supposed to tell everyone is that even those that feel super, super confident a lot of the times or put off the fact that they're very, very confident and comfortable in their own skin. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I preach body positivity very, very often and everyone still has those struggles. And so it doesn't really matter to me if you feel on a really high level or a low level, it's still something that's going to impact your life and something that you would like to take steps to feel your best as often as you can. And we really hope that through this episode, you get some tools in your tool belt. So that way, when those negative thoughts come up, when you have that, like, oh my gosh, like my arms look so big in in that picture, which is honestly a thought I personally have about myself all the time. I always think my arms could look smaller when I see pictures of myself. Um, That we hope that maybe you could take some little tidbits of information that you can use to feel confident when you look in the mirror and when you see pictures of yourself and when you go out into the world. See, and that's so funny because we all do like see ourselves in a certain way. And so where, where you see feeling self-conscious about your arms, you know, you posted that video like a week ago or so doing your 10 push-ups, And I was like, damn, her arms look good. Like she's doing those push-ups. You look strong. You look like feminine and strong. And I was like envious of that. And so it's so funny because how you see it one way, like another person sees it a totally different way. And I think and- a lot of that comes from, so like growing up, me and one of my best friends, we are like the same height and all growing up, we were basically the same size. Like we were within like five pounds of each other, probably up until about end of high school, college time. Um, I mean, the difference was that I happened to have bigger boobs than she did. And she had a butt when I didn't. Those were the differences between our bodies. Otherwise, there was a lot of things that were really similar. We had very similar builds. And then when we kind of like continued to grow and develop into women, like my hips came in when I went to college. I all of a sudden was not able to wear small size pants, like mediums or larges are kind of what fits on my body now because I have hips, I have curves and I'm proud of that. And so I kind of grew up with this community of women around me, like some of my best friends and her family happen to be built different than me. If you look at me, you look at my mom, you look at some of my um, female cousins, we're not built small. Like we are 
strong. Um, not that you can't be strong if you're very thin. I know very thin women who are incredibly strong as well, but we just, there is substance to us. I like to say that a light or a strong breeze is not going to knock us over. Like there's substance to us. And so I think that part of it for me was I grew up looking at some women looking a certain way. And then I had to realize that, Hey, my body's not naturally going to do that. And that's 100% okay. And just becoming more and more okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've also, you know, kind of sometimes felt like insecurities and wanted to change your body with your hair, which is crazy because like, I love your natural hair and like would die to have it. I think it looks so pretty. Um, But that's been a huge thing for you too, is your hair. And it's funny when we do get really like insecure or self-conscious about our hair because it's so changeable, which Mm -hmm. is like an interesting thing, you know, but, um, maybe you could just give our listeners a little moment about your uh, journey with your hair too, and how that has impacted you and in such a big way. Yeah. I think when it comes to like holistic body positivity, my hair has been my biggest struggle. Um, so for those of you that have never seen a picture of me, I have very (laughs) curly natural hair. It is, um, very, voluminous. Um, it can be really frizzy. And so growing up when I was in high school, it's like Andy McDowell or like mini driver, curly hair, like Sarah, Jessica Parker, sex in the city, friggin' like curly, awesome hair, by the way, blonde, (laughs) like a dirty blonde. When I was in high school, it was kind of the style to have straight hair. That was kind of just, that's, that's what the in style was. And so I had literally the opposite. I say that I really wish that I would have like been in high school and college in the eighties because I would have fit right in. I would have had to do nothing to my hair and it would have been perfect. (laughs) Um, and so for me, I was kind of like subconsciously told like, oh, you should straighten your hair. And I think it started off by one of my friends just being like, I wonder what your hair would look like straight because I grew up very much as a tomboy. My mom is not the like hair expert herself. She's got curly hair like me. And I mean, it's, it's, she's had to kind of figure out how do I style it? How do I do it? Um, my mom struggled with braiding hair when I was growing up. She worked so hard to learn how to braid, but I kind of gave up on her because I could do it better. (laughs) Um, And I just, I guess I didn't, like my examples of people around me with like beautiful hair were individuals that had straight hair. And that was the opposite of me. And so I kind of had this like subconscious thing of like, I should just straighten my hair. And there is something about when my hair is straight, like when you have curly hair, you don't want to touch it because if you touch it, it gets frizzy. Like whenever people are like, oh, you have curly hair. Can I like, can I play with it? I'm like, no, get your hands away from my head. Um, I like bristle and I'm like, eh, stay away from me. And when I, when your hair is straight, you can like run your fingers through it and it doesn't get messed up. And it it just feels so silky and so smooth. And I just like, didn't have that experience very much. So I kind of loved it and I still love it. And so I started in high school, I straightened my hair every single day. Like I had this routine where I'd go to whatever sporting and practice that I had that afternoon, come home, I would shower, I would straighten my hair um, because I'm not a morning person. So I needed to kind of do it the night before, wake up in the morning earlier than I probably needed to, to just make sure my hair was still straight and then go to, go to school for the day. I did that every day for four years. Um, every once in a while I wouldn't and people would be like, oh my gosh, your hair's curly. And they would always say, it looks really nice. And I would not hear it. I was like, no, you're like, I would be like, oh, thank you. And in my head, I was like, you're lying to me. Um, that's not true. That's not how I feel. You're just saying that to be nice. And it wasn't until I got to college and my laziness came out and I was like, I am not taking the time to wake up early to do my hair every goddamn day. <laughs> I just... Mm-hmm. Nope. Uh, the motivation completely went away. And that's when I started to actually kind of embrace my curly hair. Um, and I think part of it may have been that I dyed my hair. I'm naturally kind of a dirty blonde and I dyed my hair a very dark brown when I was in college, just to kind of change things up. Um, short hairstyles are not my thing. My hair is totally my security blanket. I have very long hair. I love it. I've cut it twice in my life and have regretted it immediately afterwards. So if I want to change up my hair, my hair color is going to be kind of the best place to get something a little bit different. And I think that part of me getting more comfortable with my curly hair was that I did change the color of it 
And so it allowed it to look different to me and I learned to love it and I learned to really enjoy it. And it, uh, the craziness and the kind of fun personality that my hair has allowed me to almost express my goofy personality a little bit more. It kind of fit a little bit better. And so now most days I still straighten my hair or not straighten my hair. Sorry. Keep it curly. Um, I do straighten it. Um, I like to on the weekends just cause it's a little bit fun. Um, I don't tend to work out as much on the weekends. I don't get sweaty. I can wash my hair on Friday and then I can keep it straight until Sunday or Monday. Um, and so I, now I'm at the point where I don't straighten my hair, or do my hair necessarily for other people. It's because I want to for me, because I also enjoy that version of my hair and how I look. Um, but it's definitely kind of been struggles. Like when I go to special events or I have presentations or interviews, there is a part of me that always has this need of, Oh, I should do my hair. Oh, I should do my hair. I should straighten it. I should curl. I should do something to it. And it, it's definitely taken me some time to be like, no, my curly hair can be just as beautiful, just as empowering, just as confident, um, as my straight hair. And I think that's really important that you just said, like you straighten it for you, Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing something for yourself so that you feel good, like making a change. Um, that's ultimately like really what, what it should all be about. Um, I right now during the coronavirus stuff, you know, being home self-isolation, no one has seen me except for like Chelsea on zoom calls and, um, Jamie on like FaceTime and then my stepdad and my son. So like makeup, it's like, what the heck for, but every now and then I'm like putting on eyeliner and like doing my eyebrows, putting on a little bit of makeup, doing my hair, because for me, I just feel a little bit better or a little bit like more ready for the day having those little things. So for you straightening your hair on the weekend, you do it more for you. That's really important. You know, when you are, um, feeling insecure about something with your body or you're wanting to make a change, why? And then, you know, do it for you. So, Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much for sharing all of that, Chelsea. I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that can relate to so much of how you're feeling. And um, just really knowing that we all do have like our own struggles with our bodies. One of the things that got us feeling like this was an important episode to do was um, me telling Chelsea about how when I got my diagnosis for Crohn's disease, um, I was like, damn it, I got the icky one. Because it's like the pooping disease is how it's like known as, which is like so shitty, (laughs) pun intended. (laughs) And there's so many people out there with chronic illness that have like talked about their body image issues. They've gained weight. They've lost weight. They might have like an ostomy bag. They may have, um, you know, like a pick line. There could be all sorts of things that just makes your body feel more like it's like this medical vessel device thing rather than like your body that should be like beautiful and sexual and fun. And, um, yeah, so I, I also had some body image issues like growing up. I think as females, like it's so hard not to. I was kind of the opposite entirely of Chelsea growing up. Like I always had hips. I always had a butt. I did not have like boobs. You know, my shoulders and arms were like skinny, but like everyone called me like assy Cassie in like middle school. Oh my God, they did? (laughs) Oh yeah, dude. But in middle school, you know, I was like- that's right. Got my booty jeans on, you know, and I, so I like owned it, you know, I was like, Oh, I love that. But you know, and so then that was kind of my, like, it, I, it ended up being like, I was one of the first girls to like hit puberty, you know, I didn't have a lot on top. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to own my hips. I'm going to own my butt and like kind of went with it. So then it kind of became, that actually was like one of the things that I like led with or like liked about myself. And so as long as I was like dating someone who was like an ass man, I was like, yeah, then we're good. You know, but if they were like a tit man, I was like, oh shit, you know, like they're not going to think I'm sexy. See where that's been like literally my, I've been the entire opposite, like my entire life. I'm like, right. So it's funny because you and I had like (laughs) totally opposite experience was experiences with that. And, um, 
as I was growing up, like I had, I started getting a lot of insecurities about my skin. Like as for you having saying like your shoulders, um, were one of your biggest insecurities and even like going into your hair, into your young adult years, um, my skin was always one of my biggest insecurities. I had acne. I still get it. You know, like it's the best it's ever been now. I'm 32 this summer. Um, and it's, it does look the best now, but it's been a struggle for me forever. So I've always been self-conscious about my skin. It was on my shoulders and my back a little bit, um, in my teen years, but mostly just my face. Um, and so, it started to get better through my adult years. And then it was off of my body completely. I only really had it on my face for like my twenties and stuff. And, but I always would wear makeup. Like I was one who didn't leave the house without some foundation on because I had to like cover it up. Um, so it was really upsetting to me in 2016, 17, when I started Remicade, which is an immune suppressant, um, used to treat Crohn's disease. It's an IV medication and it's actually classified as a chemotherapy drug. So it's a pretty hardcore drug. There's a lot of side effects that go along with it. It's pretty intense stuff. I had a lot of hair loss with it, um, which my hair has been something that I have liked over the years. It's it's thick. It became really thin. It became very um, weightless, like it would like hang, you know, and didn't have any body. But one of the biggest things was with my Remicade, um, I got what looked like all of this body acne from it. And it was essentially the drug trying to leave my system, like through my skin. So it would look like acne, but it wasn't like you could not like pop any of like the little pimples. They were like, it was, it was kind of weird. Um, and that was all over my chest, my upper arm, shoulders, back. And it would sometimes even go down my back, like down my spine, sometimes even towards my butt um, and on my boobs, like so that, that made me feel pretty insecure, especially because it looked a lot like acne. I was like 28, 29 years old. And I'm like, really, you know, and, um, I had started getting to a point where, so like, uh, when I was trying on wedding dresses at one point or bridesmaid dresses, I, I tried on a dress that had like a really low back. And one of my friends, um, Anastasia shout out. She was like, you have such a beautiful back. Like she was like, you have just such like a pretty sexy back. And I was like, what I do. And I'd never been told that. And so I felt like, Oh, and she really made me feel good about like my back. And so then to go and be like covered in these weird, like pimply looking things like that was hard for me. Um, the way that I got over that, like for any of, you, any of you out there who may have had similar side effects from medication, um, birth control can do that. I think antidepressants can do that. Honestly, the best way that I got over it was I just said, fuck it. Like I was just like, fuck it. You know, the medication is trying to help me. Fuck it. <laughs> I can't like worry about my skin and how it looks. I cannot put the energy into it. My energy has to go into more important things you know, people can judge me. People can look at me because of it. They don't know. And honestly, that's the way I let go of it. I still wore tank tops. I still wore my bikini in the summertime. And I was just like, fuck it. I don't care. And that saying like, fuck it, let it go can be really empowering. So I encourage you to do that. Another thing that I had, uh, is this skin discoloration that I have on my tummy right now from using my hot water bottle. If you follow us on social media, I have made a few posts about it. Um, so a year ago when I first burned myself and got this discoloration, I was really self-conscious about it. In the summertime, I was wearing one piece swimsuits or high-waisted bikini bottoms and was like, super insecure. Like people are not going to know what's wrong with me at the pool. And I got to this place where I was like, I was feeling quite happy with my figure. And then I was like, oh, I fucking ruined my body with this discoloration. And then actually I saw um, Laura Parker at Laura E. Parker on Instagram. She made a post where she had that same discoloration in like her lingerie. And I was like, yes, bitch. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's me. What? And it was such an inspiration. She has endometriosis. She totally has those same like burn discolorations on her stomach. She doesn't give an F. She like wears lingerie. She takes photos all the time. And I was like, well, yeah, she's just like, she's like, this is a part of me. This is because of my pain. This is because of my illness. 
I don't give a shit. It helps me. And um, that really helped me get my mind to a place of like, fuck it. Just, I don't want to spend the energy on being worried about it um, and feeling insecure about it. This is just part of me. I'm not going to stop using my hot water bottle because it's my biggest pain relief. So nothing's going to change as far as like that going away. So just own it. And, you know, I started wearing my low cut bikini bottoms again and was just like, I don't care. And then the sun helped it a little bit. And some vitamin C serum has helped it a little bit. But now it's like really bad again because I've been using it excessively for the last like month. Um, So if you have that too, I would encourage you to look at being like, fuck it, just own it. You know, like this is your body. You know, you have to do what you have to do to make yourself feel better, whether it's medications um, you know, or, um, some kind of treatment like the hot water bottle or something. Um, and then again, kind of going back to it, just being like, I got really worried because I thought I had the icky disease. Um, I totally saw my body differently worrying about, um, going to the bathroom all the time. Or when you Google Crohn's, like it's such a misconception that it is like the pooping disease that I was like, Oh my God, I'm never going to be able to tell someone that I date or that I'm like having a thing with or something about my Crohn's because that's like, when you Google it, that's like what it is. And I'm, they're going to think I'm like icky. And I got so stuck on that. Um, and didn't say it out loud actually to anyone until just the last few months. And I've had this for four years. It's not the icky disease people like your body is not icky everyone has to like poop, you know, everyone has like to do these things and, um, how, you know, I don't, it's let it go. It's like, so not worth it. And there are people out there who are going to see you for you and see you beautifully. And you need to see yourself beautifully because you are, and it's just, let it go. I just really encourage you to say, fuck it and let it go. So while you were sharing all that, Cassie, I remembered something from when I was in middle, I think it was middle school, um, and of elementary school, middle school, that reminded me, um, or of a time that I felt really icky. So I think it actually started when I was like in fourth or fifth grade, but I started getting this rash on my belly, right below my belly button. And it got to the point, like it was so bad that I would literally, like, I would scratch so much it would make me bleed. And I spent like probably two or three years trying to figure out why I was getting this rash. And it was like pretty localized. Every once in a while, other patches would kind of pop up on like my arms or something else. And I was told by a dermatologist or someone that it was like eczema. And so I was putting mm-hmm. all the eczema crap on it that I possibly could. And it would kind of help. Like I, in order to try to get myself to stop scratching at it, I would literally take one of those like cotton, like ace bandages that like you wrap like sprained ankles with. And I would wrap it around my belly to try to keep me from scratching at night. Jeez. And I, when I was, yeah, when I, when it first started, I didn't really think anything of it. I was just like, oh, it's a crappy rash. Like, that's fine. But I think I'd gone to like some birthday party that was at the pool. And so I was wearing, I mean, I was like nine or 10. I was wearing like an age appropriate two piece swimsuit, but you could see the rash. And I, I, Again, I don't think that whoever said this to me meant it negatively, but they were like, oh, what's that? And it just, however the reaction was, like, it came across to me as something is wrong with you. Something is really, really gross. And so then I spent the rest of elementary school into the beginning of middle school, like covering it up. So I I also didn't wear two-piece swimsuits, which then made me feel like not good because I was like, well, do people think that I'm wearing a one-piece because I think I'm fat Mm -hmm. or all all this other negative self-talk and scary things like in middle school, we had gym class and we had to all change in the locker room together, which is a scary enough thing when you're in middle school. <laughs> um, but I was also terrified that someone was going to see the fact that I had this nasty ass rash on my belly. And so then I finally got to a dermatologist that apparently knew what they were talking about. And they were like, oh, it's a nickel. They looked at it for 30 seconds, not even 30. It was like five seconds, actually. They're like, it's a nickel allergy. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And so when you wear jeans, I wore jeans growing up. There's that button at the back, that little like snap. And so that's nickel. And so I went in and I like bought iron on patches or fleece and like sewed on patches to cover that up on all of my jeans. Stopped wearing, I can't wear nickel jewelry. And so I need the really nice stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But as soon as I did that and put like, did a little bit of steroid cream on it to just kind of help clean it up. It went away right away. 
Oh my gosh, that's um, so interesting. And so, but like, I, that's how I felt for so long. I was like, kind of like you felt like I was icky. I was gross. Mm-hmm. I was broken. It really, it, I wasn't, it was because no. I was allergic to something. Oh yeah. You were allergic <laughs> to something. And that goes into, um, also like I've talked to with my friends and like my sister-in-law and like my sister-in-law has like super difficult periods. I mean, they like floor her, dude. They are so bad. She actually is like so strong because she like always goes to work and I don't know how she does it because her periods are like hell. But she'll talk about how, you know, how she feels like icky when she's, you know, when you're like bleeding to death, dude, you don't feel sexy. (laughs) I call it the bloody massacre. (laughs) Yeah. Like you don't feel good about yourself when you've like bled through your pants and you're Mm -hmm. like, you're lightheaded and you're cramping. And so like, we all have had moments where we like feel like our body's icky and we don't feel good about ourselves. And, um, we really want to help you to know that like a lot of us out there feel that way, whether you have an illness or whether you don't, we've all been there. So we can all relate to a moment in time that we have had that feeling. Mm -hmm. And, um, Moving forward to help you come out of that feeling, one of the things that I would really like to share is um, there is a man named Dr. Masaru Emoto, and he wrote a book, and you can look him up on YouTube, and he did this test using water molecules. He Okay, so he took these glasses and put water into each of the glasses, this like purified great water and in each glass he wrote a note or like a label and put it on the glass with various words and they would range from things like hope love joy positivity mother Teresa, and the trust you know faith and then he would also have some with negative stuff on there like hate i hate you I hate myself, Adolf Hitler, like really negative labels on these glasses of water. Then he would sit with each one and kind of like put his intention and energy into each glass of water um, with these labels and the words. So example, if, for example, if he sat with the one about love, he sat and felt love and thought of love and embodied love with this glass. Whereas if he sat with the other one of like, I hate you and I hate myself, he would sit with those thoughts and those feelings and create that energy with that glass of water. Literally, the molecules of water like change. They took photographs of these molecules of water and at a cellular level, they changed. And these photographs that you can see, all the ones with these positive words, positive energy, positive thoughts, were like beautiful little molecules and symmetrical and these nice stars and they were bright and they were light. And the ones that were negative, like I hate myself, I hate you, um, Adolf Hitler, death. They, the coloring was like black. I mean, it was like negative, nothing was symmetrical. They were they were kind of ugly and the body is made up of like what percentage of water a freaking high amount i can't remember right now but it's like what is it like 60 or 80 percent or something like that somewhere in there it's freaking high i should know this right now but the body is made up of a huge percentage of water so if you talk to yourself that way and you say negative things about yourself and about your body on a super regular basis your molecules your cellular level feels it and it doesn't feel good. So I encourage you to talk to yourself positively. That's like definitely one thing that I really, I really wanted to share that. Yeah. I think that's so interesting. I think our energy really has a huge impact on ourselves, our life, the world around us. And I think our thoughts do too, because our thoughts kind of influence the energy that we're putting out there. And so kind of one of my favorite things to work with people on is changing those thoughts. So I don't know how many conversations I've had with amazing, beautiful women that are struggling with weight loss or confidence or whatever it is, but they'll sit there and they'll tell me, (laughs) I'm scared that I'm still not going to love myself when I reach my goal. I'm scared I'm still not going to love with myself when I in this size of clothes or when I'm this certain weight on the scale or just whatever they're trying to work towards, they're scared. They're still not going to love themselves. And it breaks my heart to hear that. Cause it just, it just, there's so much pain and 
sadness and that thought right there. Um, so if you're feeling like that, just, just know you are not alone in having those thoughts, but also that there's ways that you can change it. You really can learn to love yourself as you are in this moment and still want things to change about yourself or still want to want to have different things in your life. And so I just really want everyone listening to know that it's okay to be unsure of how you're going to feel in the future. Cause I've definitely had the same thoughts. Like if you put on, if I were to go put on my swimsuit right now, I'm sure one of the thoughts that pop, would pop into my head would be, well, I probably feel more confident in this if I lost a couple pounds. And that may or may not be true. Um, but what happens is you lose the couple pounds that you think you need you to feel more confident. And then your brain's like, but if I feel this much more confident because I lost a couple pounds, how much more confident could I feel if I lost even more? And that's not necessarily this. It's, it's kind of a semi-logical thought pattern that doesn't actually make sense when you look at it. It's logical enough for our brains to attach onto and to process, but it's not logical enough that when you really look at it from a step back for it to make sense and be valid anymore. And so what's a lot more sure is if you can find ways to love yourself as you are right now, then you're going to kind of guarantee that you're going to keep loving yourself as you get closer and closer to whatever your goal in life is. Um, Whether it's a weight loss goal or it's just feeling good about yourself or wanting to be a certain size. I'm a big believer in the number on the scale, the number that you put, the size of clothes you put on has nothing to do with your confidence, your body image. Like it's, it's just a number. It's very arbitrary. It doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, We just make it mean a whole lot. It's okay to, step away from that goal and love yourself now. And it can feel really awkward. So clients that I've had go through this process with me, I start them off by saying, I want you to every morning when you look in the mirror, I want you to say positive affirmations about yourself. Like I am beautiful. I love myself. Um, I love everything about me saying positive things. And they're going to honestly feel kind of like a lie at the beginning. And that's okay but you're trying to kind of imagine what it would feel like to love yourself. So when you have the goal of, man, I'm going to feel so amazing when I lose 10 pounds. Well, what do you think you're going to feel like when you lose that 10 pounds? Feel those feelings right now. And it'll start to tell your brain and your soul that, hey, everything is okay as I am right now. And then do as many things as you can to truly make yourself feel good. So if there's a certain piece of clothing that you put on and you're like, I hate this. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. I hate the way I look in this. Don't wear it. And maybe get rid of it entirely. Yeah. I mean, if it's like a uniform that you have to wear for work or for school, then that doesn't count. That's a different issue. Make the best of it. Add some accessories that do make you feel good. Um, but for the most part, like don't own clothes that don't make you feel good. Like mm-hmm. I know pretty much everyone probably has something in their closet that they're, that they're like, oh, when I hit this goal or when this changes in my body, I'll, I'll wear this. I mean, I even have, I have this dress, Cassie and I have talked about it, that I've had in my closet for probably two or three years and I have been, never worn it. It's a very um, form-fitting bodycon dress that I just haven't felt completely confident wearing. And I'm always like, well... When I work out a little bit, a little bit more consistently, like I'll look better in it. I'm going to look fine in it just for, like right now. Mm-hmm. And I should just wear it right now. And I do actually have plans to wear it this weekend. Yay! Fine. So. Yay! And also it's social isolation time. I'm staying at home. The only person that's going to see me is my fiance. And, and you need to wear it and everything. Yes. You're going to look so, like a babe. Yeah. And I, and I will look good in it because all the things that I'm seeing about myself And this goes for anyone. If there's something that you're like, oh my God, everyone is staring at this part. If everyone's staring at my love handles or the zit that I have on my face or the whatever it is, chances are no one is noticing. No one. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing like my sister-in-law, we we went to Mexico not long ago, uh, two years or something ago. And dude, down in Mexico, like there were all sorts of, you know, body types walking around in their bikinis. And you would see the like, you know, real curvy ladies wearing the like skimpiest bikini ever. And I'm owning their bodies. They are owning their bodies. And I never looked at them and was like, ew, she shouldn't be wearing that. 
those thoughts never went through my head. I was more like envious, like she is rocking it wearing that bikini and I'm sitting over here, you know, like covering up my body, like, and I don't really want to, I want to get a fucking tan, you know? So it's like, don't walk around worrying that people are judging you um, because they're probably not. And who gives a fuck if they are, you know, like we need problem, not yours. Yeah. And especially Chelsea going into like how you were talking about like loving yourself now so that you can, so that you can love yourself. Like when you do lose the weight or gain the weight or, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, that's really important. Um, Additionally, it's like, don't shame yourself for like, wanting to work out and tone up like Chelsea and I have had a discussion about that where it's like we both totally like love ourselves how we are and our bodies right now like I feel very comfortable with the way that I look now you know like if I'm like FaceTiming with my boyfriend (laughs) and I have like no makeup on and I'm all sweaty from working out and like you know look like shit I don't I don't care. I, I'm not trying to like get the angle or the lighting. I'm just like, this is me. This is how I look. And it is so freeing. You guys, if you don't already practice that, just try it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but Chelsea and I have talked about that where we both feel really comfortable and love ourselves for who we are and how we look. And yet like, it's still okay that like, I want stronger arms. I want to feel toned in my arms and stronger. Chelsea wants to like have a little more round bootay. You know, like it's okay for you to do for to want those things as well. Um, just as long as you're not like disliking how you are right now and like making yourself feel bad about it and like feeling guilty about it. And um there's a lot to be said too um about trying to see your body and viewing yourself in a neutral way. Like you can love certain things about yourself, you can like certain things about yourself, but one of the biggest goals is don't hate and dislike and negative talk and shame parts of yourself. Look at it as a more neutral thing. Um, I did a body love kind of challenge thing back in 2016, 17 with a woman named Summer Inanen. She has Fearless Rebel Radio and she does Um, online challenges and coaching and stuff still, she really helped me to have that shift. Like thighs are just thighs. They hold my body up. They're part of my legs. You know, arms are just arms. I don't have to love my arms. I don't have to hate my arms. They're just arms, like get to a neutral place. Later, after I had done that work with Summer In and In, and it was like gold, um, it was really fantastic for me. I also worked with a woman named Dr. Dawn DeLilly and her, uh, she has a website, which we'll put in the show notes, dawndelilly.com. And she's a naturopathic doctor, but she is a huge advocate for um, hormone balance and owning your body positivity, healthy body image, um, and all sorts of stuff. And she also went over some of this neutral stuff. We went over, um, our bodies and then even our like daily lives and what we do each day. And you had to like color your stuff, red, yellow, or green things you like, things you're kind of like, okay about and things you hate doing or that you hate about yourself. And the goal was not to get all the reds to a green of the things you hate to a loving yourself or what you do in your day. It's just at the goal was to get it neutral because that's better than negative, which goes back to the water molecule thing, you know, at a cellular level, we want you to feel better and feel good about yourself. Again, I really encourage you to take a moment and like, let things go and say, fuck it. Like if your hair doesn't look perfect today, it's fine. What is it really going to do? Who cares? Let it go. I think just also know that most people are not judging you in the way that you are in your own head and that you will be your worst critic at all times. I know that there was one time it was, I was at a friend's wedding and there was a picture that happened to me snapped while we were all dancing. And when I saw the picture later, like I am making the goofiest face ever who knows why my face looks like the way it does um but afterwards like I had a few friends be like Chelsea like what is this and yeah I could definitely make it mean something really really bad for me like oh I look like an idiot in that photo oh my goodness this is awful but none of my friends were pointing it out because they thought I looked bad they were just joking around with me that it's like 
oh, like you made a funny face. Like that just, that camera happened to click at just the right moment, mm-hmm. like what we captured. And so it's kind of the way that you approach things. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you, because there are some not so nice people out there in the world. If you do have someone that's in your life, that's like, why are you wearing that dress? Why'd you do your makeup like that? Who are you to put your body out there in a certain way? Just know that those issues that they're that they're dealing with that that's them it ain't about you mm-hmm. it's 100 percent about them they're reflecting their own insecurities for, about themselves onto you and then if you just sit there and you're like you know what i'm just gonna brush this off and not let this impact me it's not it's not yeah. gonna make a difference in your life and you're gonna be able to keep going and you're gonna have more and more moments where like i feel like a badass i feel amazing i can do this i'm i'm awesome and so Find those moments where you do feel amazing and pull from that. Don't wear clothes that make you feel gross. Wear things that make you feel good. Do your hair and your makeup or put jewelry on in any way that makes you feel good. Because that's all that matters. It is all that matters. And um, one last thing too, Chelsea, about you saying like, wear the clothes that make you feel good. Um, Having all those clothes in your closet of like, I'm going to fit into these again one day. And then like always trying them on and not fitting into them. Like- that sucks. Stop I've been there. That. Yeah. Stop doing that. Like I've been there and done that. And then I was like, Oh my God, you know, I'm in my thirties. I have an 11 year old. I have hips and booty that ain't going nowhere. And my tummy, like whatever. And so it's like, I got rid of all of those pants that I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to fit into these again. And they don't make me feel good. And I always look at them in my closet and I'm like, what if, you know, and it's like this pressure and it's torturing yourself for no reason. Mm-hmm. Buy new clothes. So I encourage you to just like either put it all in a tub in a deep, dark spot in your basement or in your garage or just get rid of it. You know, mm-hmm. it's going to also feel so much better. I encourage people to those clothes that you're comparing. They're like, oh, well, I used to fit into this. Like what time of your life were those from? I had a dress that I went to prom in when I was like 17 or 18 years old. And I was probably early 20s, 22, 23 when I tried it on the next time because I'd just been carrying it around in my closet for I don't know how many times, how, whatever I moved when I was in college, I moved it with me for some stupid reason because I'm never wearing it again. I don't go to places where I need a prom dress. And so I tried it on and I couldn't get it to zip. Mm-hmm. Like it would not go over my hips. It wouldn't go over... My, my little butt, it, I, I, my rib cage was not going to move for the yeah. zipper. And I had to remind myself, I was like, I wore this when I was 17 or 18. My body changed a whole hell of a lot from my late teens to my early 20s. Mm-hmm. And I had to kind of sit there and be like, so I'm not meant to fit into this anymore. And that's okay. In order for me to get down to that size, I would probably have to do such unhealthy things. Mm-hmm. And that's just not okay. So kind of notice like what season of your life did maybe those clothes come from? And there's probably some pretty good reasons as to why you don't even need to worry about being that size anymore. Absolutely. Like so well said. And I'm I'm also really glad that you brought up the rib cage thing because also people like when you're trying to try on these clothes, like let's look at your bones and like see if like these pants can even fit over your pelvis hip skeleton bones anymore mm-hmm. or your rib cage like you said if you can't zip it up okay it may not be because of like the three croissants that I ate on Tuesday you know it's like my ribs <laughs> so I'm really glad that you brought that up too like give yourself some freedom cut yourself a break and reach out to us on social media if you're, um, or email hello at the real spoonies unite.com. If you're having issues with your body image, we would love to help you work through that. And Chelsea is a coach that specializes with stuff like that. She is incredible with so much to offer. And um, we would love to help you work through any issues that you're having with this, because ultimately like it gives you so much freedom and we want you to feel happy and to love yourself. Mm-hmm. And if there's any of these topics, um, cause we could talk about body image for literally ever. I think both of us, oh my <laughs> think this episode was going to be quite this long. Um, mm-hmm. but if there's anything that you kind of want us to touch on a little bit more, uh, please, please let us know. We love getting feedback on the topics, the content that you all are looking for so that we can better serve all of you because that's the goal of this podcast yes exactly 
So, Thanks, well, everybody. We will, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please write us a review to help us reach more people like you. If you'd like to connect with Cassie and I, you can find us on Instagram at The Real Spoonies Unite. You can also join our private Facebook community, Spoonies Unite, or you can visit our website, therealspooniesunite.com, for all sorts of resources and to stay up to date with our current projects. And don't worry, you can find all of these links in the show notes below. Thank you to our wonderful Spoonie patrons for all your support, and you can become one too. That's right. All you have to do is go on over to patreon.com slash the real Spoonies Unite, and you can get all sorts of extra goodies like videos of our episodes and more. Any support is greatly appreciated. It helps enable us to create more content for all of you, as well as make this podcast sound better and better. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to be back in your ears soon. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please write us a review to help us reach more people like you. If you'd like to connect with Cassie and I, you can find us on Instagram at The Real Spoonies Unite. You can also join our private Facebook community, Spoonies Unite, or you can visit our website, therealspooniesunite.com, for all sorts of resources and to stay up to date with our current projects. And don't worry, you can find all of these links in the show notes below. Thank you to our wonderful Spoonie patrons for all your support, and you can become one too. That's right. All you have to do is go on over to patreon.com slash the real Spoonies Unite, and you can get all sorts of extra goodies like videos of our episodes and more. Any support is greatly appreciated. It helps enable us to create more content for all of you, as well as make this podcast sound better and better. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to be back in your ears soon.